hunting weaver go, a hunting weaver go. Send him in, send him in, send him in, a hunting weaver go. Send him in, send him in, send him in, a hunting weaver go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a program of tall stories dedicated to the great American whopper. Allow me to present the exalted giraffe of the tall story club, Lowell Tavis. Hello, everybody. For 20 years, I've been looking for the tallest tall story in the world, and maybe this is it. The president of the Chattanooga chapter of the tall story club writes me as follows. I wish to state that the bearer of this note has told me a tale that I consider the tallest of them all. Get him to tell it to you. Well, I've done better than that. I've persuaded him to come right here and tell it into this microphone. So here is Charlie Chucklehead of Chattanooga. Come on, Charlie. Psst. You see, it was this way. I had a job as a chauffeur. And after the accident, the man in the junkyard told me it was the most complete smash-up he ever saw. So he gave me a job in his junkyard, breaking up the old cars. You see, I was a breaker and a loser. You mean, uh, you mean you went broke and lost your mind? No, no, no. I had to break them up and lose the pieces. Sneak them out and drop them accidentally someplace. Well, where did you lose them? In somebody's back alley? No. I figured it would be doing a big favor to somebody if I fixed it so they could have an old gas tank in their parlor. You see, they could use it as an aquarium for the goldfish. Oh, yeah, or in the nursery as a baby's bath. Sure, there are lots of things you could do with an old gas tank that you couldn't do with a grand piano. And I gave him a lot of other things, too. In place of the furniture. Carburetors for teacups and steering wheels for chairs. And fenders. You see, the trouble is, there's so many of them. And they're so noisy, it's hard to sneak them anyplace. Well, you could have shipped them to China for musical instruments in a Shanghai jazz band. And I thought of sending them to Switzerland for bobsleds. But, you know, I'd rather give them to folks in this country. Oh, I see. Your charity begins at home. Just a patriotic philanthropist. I was sorry I could not give those folks the fenders. You know, you could tell from that wonderful collection of antiques there on the street that those were people who would appreciate parts from the oldest wrecks in the old car. Madame? Yes, Wilkins? The furniture has arrived. Ah, with great promptitude. Ain't it, Wilkins? Van Dusen. Right then, I got a real idea. And you had your ups and downs. I had to think up new ideas all the time, or I'd have been buried under piles of junk. Someday, Charlie, they are going to bury you under piles of... Yes, I know, piles of junk. But I found somebody who would appreciate those old tires. You like to do favors for millionaires, don't you? Sure, I always do. Waldorf James to His Majesty's Ambassador's reception. You know, mister, sometimes I nearly ran out of ideas. Hey! 
Are you Professor Timothy Hopper? Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Professor, is that the metal-eating bird? <laughs> no, no. No. That's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Well, do you mean to say that that bird can eat metal? Yeah, yeah. That bird eats tin cans. Eat tin cans? Yeah, yeah, tin cans. Scrap iron, nuts, bolts, or any kind of metals. I'll explain how to capture that bird. Yeah. You know, that bird doesn't live in nests and trees like the other fellas do. No. No, no. They live in holes in the ground. On those stones on their heads are covers for their underground homes. And to get those birds out of the ground, you must play music. Yeah, but I can't play music. Well, take musicers with you. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were a bird. I am. I'm a tough bird. You'll have to excuse me. I got it. my cage. Why, she wouldn't give me a nibble. She's a metal-eating bird. I'll fix that, all right. What's next? What's the big idea? Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's all right. I'll make you look like a metal worm. Now, go get her. Yo. Uh -huh. Hello, hello, who calls? Yes, where are you? You who? Oh, oh, oh. Hello, baby. You want to take a walk? Oh, oh. My, how shiny you are. Yep. I'm a metal worm. Oh, metal. Oh. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh. Something? Oh, yes, but I won't miss. This time. <laughs> oh, laugh, will you? Oh, all around the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, uh, all around the uh, mulberry bush. You can't find me. Uh, you can't find me. <laughs> you can't find me. <laughs> belly up, belly up. Look, I'm a flight tall sitter. Now I've got you. No, you haven't. Yeah. Play 
rough, eh? Let's go. <laughs> you can't take it. Peek-a-boo. <laughs> Wanna take a walk? I'll walk you. I'll walk you. Well, any time you want a lion, a tiger, or an elephant, just let me know. Thanks. Well, I'll be rolling along. Then you got your metal-eating bird back to the junkyard. Yes, sir. And I put her in a shed, a wooden shed, you know. I had to do that so she wouldn't eat her way out. <laughs> Boy, what an appetite. Can you lay eggs? Me? Sure! And I can hatch them, too. I can hatch them. start a flipper factory and hatch five million cars a year. <laughs> hey, what's the joke? We metal birds lay only one egg every hundred years. <laughs> a hunting river go, a hunting river go, a hunting river go. 